Well, hello, and welcome to the Declination Report, where I give you an overview of the main transiting declination aspects every month, as well as some advice about how you can navigate important declination events. And this month, I'll be giving you a little bit of electional advice too. And I'm your host, Tony Howard. Check out the accompanying blog post on Astrology University for a full list of the major declination aspects and dates. If you're brand new to declination and you just want to know what it is, well, check out my blog post, What is Declination at Astrology University? All right, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, we start out the year with Mars out of bounds, just as Mercury is going direct. While this could normally be a good time for new starts, and certainly a lot of us are going to be thinking along those lines, my advice is to wait just a bit until mid-month to make any big changes or new starts, and I'll say more about that shortly. The moon's two out-of-bounds periods in January are January 8th through the 12th, when the moon will be in Sagittarius and Capricorn. By the way, we're going through a period of time when the moon goes out of bounds twice a month, so I just want to stay, say that. And the out of bounds is usually encompassing two signs. And then on January 21st to the 25th, the moon's going to be in Gemini and Cancer. And being out of bounds can amplify our experience of that planet. While the moon's out of bounds in Cancer, you'll want to remember that subjective experience is at a peak. If you're normally a more objective person, this might throw you off just a bit. You might find yourself taken by emotion, for instance, in a way that feels uncharacteristic to you. Or because there's also going to be an opposition to Mars and Mercury around this time, you might be facing off with somebody else who's expressing anger in your direction, and then you might feel hurt in response or especially sensitive. The flip side is true as well. Either way, there's a message here. Resist the temptation to react instantly whether defensively or offensively. Reach out to others for clarification and feedback. If you're angry, step back and then communicate when you can do so kindly while being aware of the other person's feelings. If someone's lashing out at you, check in and then defend your own boundaries if necessary. It's totally okay to say to someone, wait a minute, I'm not feeling comfortable right now and I'd like some time before I respond. Let's table this for now and I'll let you know when I'm ready to talk. When the moon is out of bounds in Sagittarius and Capricorn at the start of the month, this has a little bit more of an upbeat and downbeat feeling. There's a major shift here from the typically optimistic Sag moon to the sometimes more pessimistic Capricorn moon. While it's out of bounds, these swings might feel a lot more dramatic. A lot of us might prefer the often resilient moon in Sagittarius, but the moon in Capricorn has its own gifts and it can help us become aware of any dependency issues and also to cultivate responsibility for our own feelings and our habitual responses to life. Turning to Mars out of bounds, while things may have been a little murky or felt that way at the end of December because Mars was out of bounds and also square Neptune, Mars has now moved into Capricorn and it's moving away from that square and that is increasing the opportunity for us to get more clear and calculated with our actions. Now this will just increase and possibly combine with some optimism and opportunity as Mars makes a trine with Jupiter around January 8th to 11th. At this time, notice how your body feels. Pay attention to desire and want that. What do you want around this time? What do you feel like striving for? What's coming up for you? I love doing vision boards for the new year. And if I were going to do one this year, I'd aim for these dates between January 8th and 11th to tap into some of that energy. Now for some cautionary advice, there's always some risk of taking things a little too far or going off in a wacky direction while Mars is out of bounds, especially with a little bit of hindsight wisdom. This isn't a given, but it's important to be aware of. If you're making new plans that seem like they're out of left field, this could be a great thing. Maybe you're breaking out of an old pattern or you finally stumbled on some action that's going to take you in a positive direction after a period of time where you felt like you're just spinning your wheels. In birth charts, Mars out of bounds often shows up as a talent for innovation. As a transit, that can be true as well, but it can also signal a time when we go off the rails a bit or take a turn that seems pretty out of character and hard to reconcile, especially once Mars is in a more normal declination range. Since there are some good energies for taking action all month, I'm going to temper my normal advice to wait out the out of bounds period and instead suggest that if you're ready to go and you need to make a bold move, just talk about it first with people close to you and see if there are any blind spots you have or things you're just not thinking of because you're chomping at the bit to move ahead. Trust your intuition and instinct here. If your plans aren't out of left field, 
maybe it's something you've been working on for a while, for instance, I'd say you've got a green light to move ahead at this time, especially in the last half of the month. The last bit of declination news is an echo of last month's connection between Mercury, Mars, and Pluto, as the three form parallels with each other right around January 30th and 31st. Now this grouping isn't as strong as last month's, but if you've been working on boundary issues and maybe that came up for you in late December, this issue might come up again at the end of January with yet another opportunity to get more clear about where you have an energy leak and how to communicate that to others. Before I wrap up today, I want to talk about some electional astrology, which has to do with picking dates for specific actions, especially those that we want to go well. Financial astrologers have noticed a strong growth potential in charts that have a tight Sun, Jupiter, Pluto aspect pattern. Now, this can include any combo of Ptolemaic aspects. On January 22nd and 23rd, we have just one of those opportunities with the Sun conjunct Pluto in orb of a square with Jupiter. In terms of electional astrology, it's not perfect because although the sun applies to Jupiter, Jupiter is still separating from Pluto. Still, there could be some powerful growth potential to tap into here. So it could be worth paying attention to if you've got something ready to push out this month, especially something big. My favorite electional date is probably January 18th when we have the moon in Taurus along with Jupiter and Mercury is trying Jupiter and Saturn is sextile Jupiter. Now this aspect formed by planets where we have two sextiles plus a trine is called a talent triangle aspect pattern. And that could be especially great for publishing or writing endeavors. The moon is waxing at this time, which aligns with any intentions you might have for growth or building something. On January 22nd, the moon is in Cancer sextile Jupiter while Venus is applying to trine Jupiter and Mars is trine Uranus. Now, that date could be used for important relationship actions or maybe bold new moves. Now the moon opposes Mars and Mercury on this date, so you'll wanna take stock of that dynamic and those potential challenges and possibly move those planets into houses that make sense for your actions. Also remember that the moon will be out of bounds on that date and that's gonna amplify the moon. So make sure to pay special attention to where the moon is in those electional charts. Venus is more closely trying Jupiter from January 25th to 28th. So all in all, there's more opportunity for flow and a little more smooth sailing this month, especially in the second half of the month. Now at the start of the month, there's another talent triangle, this time between Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter, and it's in range between January 5th and 11th. Now that could be a great time to take actions that are aligned with your sense of meaning or purpose or your long-term goals. Or as I was saying earlier, just to think about them, this aspect aligns really nicely with setting new year intentions. And once we're clear of the Mercury square Neptune aspect by January 10th, we'll have a little more clarity to talk about it. While Mercury square Neptune from about January 4th to 10th, it might still feel like Mercury's retrograde. There's an opportunity for creative thinking here with Mercury and Neptune, but we could also fall into magical thinking. A bit of that is just part of the process of thinking about how things could be in an ideal world. So it's just part of the process, but we do need to pass any ideas that come out of that time through our reality filters before implementing them. All right, well, that takes us to the end of this month's declination report. To learn more about declination, check out my course, Intro to Declination at Astrology University. And I hope you're able to make good use of the planetary energies this month. And until next time, take good care.